the 2018 Atlanta Press Club Loudermilk Young Debate Series. Brought to you from the studios of Georgia Public Broadcasting. The Republican Race for Public Service Commission, District 5. Good afternoon, I'm Drew Dawson, GPB Augusta Station Manager and Midday News Anchor and Host on 88.5 GPB Atlanta and GPB Statewide Network. Welcome to the Atlanta Press Club Laudermick Young Debate Series, originating from the studios of Georgia Public Broadcasting in Atlanta. This is the debate among Republican candidates for the 5th District Public Service Commission. Now, for those of you who are not sure what the Public Service Commissioners do, when you turn on your lights, pick up the phone, and cook your dinner, your Public Service Commissioners determine the amount you pay for electricity, telecommunications, and natural gas. Let's meet the candidates. They're in alphabetical order. John Hitchens works in the conservation field in programming, fundraising, and advocacy. And Tricia Pridemore was appointed to serve on the Public Service Commission by Governor Nathan Deal in January of this year and is the founder and chief marketing officer of AccuCast, an online marketing software company. Now let's meet our panelists. Molly Samuel is a reporter with WABE 90.1 FM, and Christy Swartz is a reporter for ENE News, covering utility and energy in the Southeast. Now let's get started. For rules on today's debate, please visit the Atlanta Press Club website, atlantapressclub.org. To start the debate, each candidate will be asked one question by one of the panelists. Christy Swartz, you get the first question for Tricia Pridemore. Ma'am, on your website, you mentioned being the voice that stands up to corporate special interests that hurt the taxpayer. What corporate special interests are you talking about? First off, Christy, I want to thank you and Molly, and Drew, uh, the folks at the Atlanta Press Club, uh, the folks here at Georgia Public Broadcasting for hosting this afternoon's forum. Uh, it is an honor to serve the state of Georgia on the Public Service Commission. Uh, I represent District 5. Uh, the five districts that make up the state of Georgia, uh, we all come from a given district, but we run statewide. Uh, so I am very grateful to GPB to get this message out all across the state. There are corporate interests that are always interested in trying to raise rates or get uh, uh, a, a lack of diversity in our generation mix. Uh, they're advocates for any one element of the, of the generation mix, and in doing so, uh, that puts unnecessary upward pressure on rates. It's my job as a commissioner to try to have a diversified portfolio for the state. And Molly Samuel, you may now ask John Hitchens a question. Mr. Hitchens, uh, you're critical of the PSC's oversight of the Vogel expansion, but the process is well underway. Um, if you were elected, what do you think you could change about how it's going? Well, thank you, Molly, and thanks to everyone for having us here. Um, as far as Plant Vogel and, and the current situation with that, I do believe in a lot of ways that the plant is moving forward with the construction and they are being monitored and make sure the progress is being met. Uh, if I were elected, I would make sure that they are held very accountable to that, uh, to the standards that are set, and make sure that there's no more uh, cost overruns, no more over budget, no more over schedule. They need to be held accountable for what is happening there. And I would work really hard to make sure that Georgians are no longer being left aside and having to pay for all of the failures that have currently happened with Plant Vogel. That concludes the first portion of the debate. The candidates will now ask a question to their opponent. Each candidate will have 30 seconds to ask the question, 60 seconds to respond, and 30 seconds for rebuttal. By random selection, John Hitchens, you may ask the first question. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Pridemore, you mentioned that you're looking to uh, step in front of uh, special interests. Um, Georgia Power's profit will be rising from $7.4 billion to $12.6 billion because of the cost overrides and over schedule that they've hit. And that is according to PSC documents. Do you believe that they deserve to make an extra $5.2 billion in profits despite their failures? On the Plant Vogel project, we just wrapped up VCM 18 yesterday, which is the six month Vogel construction management work where we get to see how the project is progressing. When you look at VCM 17, which was the pass or fail vote that the commission took in December, um, it was de determined that the project and all of its, uh, uh, its work so far were reasonable and the costs were reasonable. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, just this year, we issued uh, over $130 in credits back to Georgia Power customers, uh, not just on Plant Vogel, but the NCCR tariff refund, as well as the Tax Cut and Jobs Act refund. 
fund. Uh, one of the very first votes that I got to make on the commission uh, was returning $69 right back into the hands of uh, Georgia Power ratepayers. And I, I stand uh, very proud of that vote, as well as some other TC&J votes and credits we've got coming up. Mr. Hitchens, your response, your rebuttal? Uh, my response to the credits that we are currently getting uh, from Georgia Power is to say that, uh, honestly, that's uh, flashing a shiny nickel in our face while they continue to take money out of our back pocket. As a rate payer since 2011, I've been paying uh, into the Vogel tax, as I like to call it, and I've yet to see one watt of energy, any return on that, while Georgia Power's profits have continued to go upward. So um, credits are nice, but I would like to see the tax end altogether. Patricia Pride Moore, you may now ask your question to Mr. Hitchens. Nearly a decade ago, the PSC instituted the Stride program. Uh, if you were elected, how would you finish Stride? Well, um, in regards to some of the uh, Public Service Commission uh, that they are handling and tackling, I will admit to being a little bit unfamiliar with some of these tasks. Uh, my, my job here is not as an insider. I did not come in as a, a handpick from the outgoing governor. I've not run in political cir circles. I am a quick learner and I will work with the PSC staff to be sure I'm up to speed on all of those subjects. I can't say that I am familiar with the stride. Uh, however, I will make sure that when I'm there that the Georgians' interests are what we're looking after and not the utilities that we're supposed to be regulating. Uh, it worries me that when I look at my opponent's funding that 70% of it actually comes from uh, the utilities that the PSC is supposed to be monitoring, and 50% of that comes from Georgia Power and Southern Company alone. So I'm coming in as an outsider, as a consumer advocate for Georgians. Ms. Pratt Moore, your rebuttal? Stride was a well-publicized program that brought natural gas resources to Metro Atlanta. So as Metro Atlanta has grown over the course of time, and we've seen what many people call sprawl, uh, it's allowed for residential gas customers to have gas logs in their homes, gas fireplaces, etc. cetera. Um, I think going forward, we still have 2,700 miles of vintage plastic pipe that we'd like to see replaced uh, with a PE composite pipe material that is safer and is better for uh, the safety of the system. For those just joining us, this is the debate between the Republican candidates for the Georgia Public Service Commission's District 5. We will now go back to the panel to ask questions to the candidates of her choice. Until we run out of time, as a point of interest, I, am, I as moderator may also ask questions of the candidates, and I'll determine when a rebuttal is appropriate. Christy Swartz, you get the first question in this round. Okay. Um, this one is for John Hitchens. According to your website, you believe that consumers should determine which source of energy is best. So what exactly do you mean by that and how exactly would that work? Well, obviously we are in a regulated market. That is how the system works currently in the state. I mean, uh, as a conservative, my personal belief is in less regulation. I would like to see ultimately the market be completely free with subsidy free and all of that, but that's not the situation that we rely on. However, having done some solar advocacy, I definitely saw unfair you know pressures against folks who wanted to do solar that was in their best interest but it wasn't economically feasible simply because some of the utilities were working hard to to keep it down so i feel like we need to allow for folks innovation um, and folks to be able to choose or to at least have an option other than just putting our money all into one uh, <coughs> nuclear project that currently is shown no results it's pride more rebuttal Currently, only 18% of our state's power is generated from nuclear. Two reactors at Plant Hatch, uh, reactors one and two at Vogel. When reactors three and four come online in 2021 and 2022, respectively, that'll raise that up to just a quarter of our state's baseload energy. And when I talk about baseload, I mean 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 day a year, carbon-free power. Uh, that is power that is not conditioned upon a sunshiny day or, uh, or wind. Uh, I am proud as a member of the commission for the votes that I've taken for uh, expanded solar projects both in Doherty and Mitchell County just this year. Molly Samuel, your turn to ask a question. Uh, Commissioner Pridemore, what areas uh, of new technology would you like to see Georgia lead in and what areas would you rather see it proven elsewhere and for Georgia to adopt later? 
One of the areas of new technology that I'm most excited about is actually around coal. So a lot of our baseload energy in the state is still generated from coal, and we're putting together a plan to uh, dismember our coal ash ponds by 2028. It is a very aggressive plan. It is ahead of what the federal government is asking the states to do. Uh, It's certainly ahead of what uh, the Trump administration has sought. And so it's a wonderful opportunity for us to go in and... uh, reset the way that we manage coal waste. Uh, it's it's an area that when you get outside of Atlanta where coal where coal plants are, are operable, uh, it's it, I'm constantly asked about coal ash ponds and uh, all the testing that goes into it. So it's a very technical process. It's a clean energy process. And uh, I hope to be able to continue that work. In addition to that, I'll also say I'm very encouraged about the clean energy coming out of biomass and what is coming out of the Trump administration right now, which is carbon neutrality on biomass. Mr. Hitchens? Well, I believe energy storage should be the area that we're focusing most on, um, both for nuclear and for solar and for other, um, other avenues that we have. I think one of the biggest issues that we, current challenges that we have is none of those are able to run at 100%, nuclear included. Um, If we had invested more in storage, we possibly could have saved ourselves from this $25 billion boondoggle that is currently happening because we could be running the current nuclear plants more efficiently and making more energy out of that instead of having to build the new reactors. Christy, the question to you. Uh, this question is for Ms. Pridemore. Ma'am, um, your name has long been circulated in other media as the person who would be replacing Stan Wise. Have you been considering running for the PSC for a while outside of this appointment, or did others approach you for this job? I've been considering it. I, I've I've had an interest in, in the world of energy and the technology of energy for many years. When I ran workforce development for the state for almost two years, I spent a lot of time uh, with not only the, the companies that produce energy, but all of the folks surrounding uh, energy jobs. It's one of the fastest growing job markets in our state. And when you consider all the workforce development opportunities in energy, it was an immediate attraction for me. Um, the Plant Vogel project is interesting because of not only what it holds for our state and energy capacity, but also in national security. Um, on you know, the day that I took office, two of the first phone calls I received came from the White House and White House staff who said, you know, we're excited, now let's get to work. Uh, and they want us to be able to look at uh, ways that the, the national security footprint is improved because of Plant Vogel being there. Molly, your question. Mr. Hitchens. How would you like to see the PSC involved in rural broadband? Well, I, I, honestly, I would like to see the PSC involved in that. I think that needs to be an issue that um, needs to be moved from the legislature to the PSC. I think that um, broadband is an issue. It's one that I've been asked several, several times about while touring the state. Um, I think the PSC would be the most equipped to handle it <clears throat> because a lot of folks are concerned about the, not, the lack of a, uh, ability to be able to uh, connect with the world. I mean, it, it's that's how it is currently. Is we are connected through a wireless and through a, you know through these uh, internet portal. Um, but there's folks throughout the state that currently don't have the same access that people like us and here in Atlanta have. Uh, so I'd like to see that moved and be fall under the the uh, purview of the Public Service Commission. Ms. Pridemore, your thoughts on rural broadband? As I've traveled the state as a commissioner and prior to that as a candidate for this office, um, high-speed internet all across Georgia continues to be an issue. It's a challenge. And I want to see us move to small cell technology. I want to see us look at the EMC networks. I want us to look at every possible option so that we can get folks outside of Metro Atlanta the fastest internet connectivity possible. Look, I've started a business from the guest room of my house before, and I can tell you, you have to have high-speed internet to be successful. And that's whether or not you're running a technology firm or if you're selling insurance. So uh, it it continues to come up as I travel the state. And I want to, whether it's the PSC or the the General Assembly, uh, our new governor, um, I want to be a part of that conversation. I want to be a part of working on a technology solution that works for the entire state and doing it in the most economical and fastest way possible. Christy, the question is to you. Okay. Uh, This is for uh, John Hitchens. Um, The hearings for Plant Vogel are open, and the public is invited to speak before each meeting. And Georgia Power maintains that they have been open and transparent through the construction process for Plant Vogel. 
Yet a lot of the information they file, such as responses to questions from the PSC staff, are trade secret, so the public cannot see them. Does this concern you, and how would you change that? Uh, it does concern me gravely. I, I think that's part of the problem that's gotten us into this situation. Um, first and foremost, we need to educate the state of Georgia and the people in Georgia about what the public service does and how important this role is within the decisions being made and that is affecting them on a daily basis. Uh, there's folks that aren't aware that decisions made right here in Atlanta during those hearings and that process are affecting their their pocketbooks and their their wallets and you know Georgia Power without question holds a lot of influence and that's exactly what I'm running against is is being tied into that kind of lobbyist uh, mentality within the state house I just believe we need to be independent and not have any sort of conflict of interest that's why I took a pledge that I wouldn't accept any money uh, from any individuals connected with the industries that the PSE is deemed to regulate. Ms. Pratt, your response? In terms of trade secret materials, when you're building a nuclear plant, you have to consider trade secret as not only competitive state to state or other utilities, you also have to consider what that means to the United States. So there are areas around the technology that I completely understand the trade secret nature of. As somebody who has traveled through the very depths of that plant um, and and walked through it exhaustively. Um, I can tell you that for me as a commissioner, they've had an open book mentality. Uh, and, and that also goes with the finances and the financing structure with the plant. Uh, for anybody who attended or uh, listened in to yesterday's VCM 18 hearings, I can tell you that um, the, the financial structure and the schedule uh, is completely available. It's available to anybody at the PSC website or uh, folks are, are welcome to review the testimony that was provided. Uh, if there's additional information that's requested, please feel free to reach out to my office and I'll work to see if it's something that we can provide to you. Uh, we have wonderful folks that come in and provide questioning of Georgia Power. Uh, so not just the staff of the PSC, but also folks that come in that are third party. We need to interrupt you at that point. Okay. We need to interrupt you. <laughs> That is all the time we have for questions. Each candidate will now have 60 seconds for a closing statement. Trisha Primore, you get the first closing statement. Thanks so much. It is great to be here, and I really appreciate everybody who put forth the effort to tune in today. I recognize that the Public Service Commission, it isn't the sexiest job, but it is an incredibly important job. It's a job that, that we all rely upon every single month as we balance our checking accounts and as we try to make ends meet. It's also uh, the greatest point of consideration when businesses move to Georgia, and whether it's a large corporation that's looking to establish thousands of jobs jobs, or whether it's a small business owner like I was who's looking to establish a few jobs. What we pay for energy is, is passed down into the cost of all the goods and services. So I want to continue to serve Georgia and serve you and your families on the PSC. My job there is pretty simple. Keep rates low, make them as low as possible, make for a reliable system, and continue to look at common sense infrastructure reform. Please take a look at my website, Pridemore PSC. May God bless you, your family, and Georgia. Thank you. And John Hitchens, it's your turn for a closing statement. Yes. Well, thank you again for having us here. Um, as a native Georgian uh, currently raising two children in this wonderful state, I'm concerned about the direction that some of our rates are going. Uh, many times it's uh, touted that Georgia has some of the lowest rates in the country. However, when you add all the adders to that, we're currently the sixth highest. Um, that's not competitive uh, for other for businesses, for residents, and that's not the direction I want this state to go in for the children that I'm raising to grow up in. So I believe there needs to be a separation between the people on the Public Service Commission and the folks that they're regulating. I will come in without any attachments, any strings, anything of that nature. I am the true outsider. I'm gonna be a consumer advocate for the people of Georgia, and you can believe in that. I've made that pledge. And so I will continue to represent Georgia and work hard for you. If you, if you do believe that Ms. Pride Moore is the best candidate, then I'll let you take the chance for the next six years. However, I would often say that rarely does the dog bite the, hands that feed, the hand that feeds it. And 
That concludes our debate. We would like to remind voters that the primary elections will be held on Tuesday, May 22nd, and early voting has begun. Our thanks to the candidates and to our panel of journalists. We'd also like to thank the Atlanta Press Club for arranging today's debate. More information about the Atlanta Press Club and all the debates they'll host at this primary season, you can visit atlantapressclub.org for that information. This debate will be archived there and on the Georgia Public Broadcasting website, gpb.org. I'm Drew Dawson. Thanks for joining us for the Atlanta Press Club Loudermilk Young Debate Series.